The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan organization. Uh, we try to help Kansans and Topekans be informed and actively participate in our government. So having you, you here just fits right into our mission awfully well. So we appreciate that time. Um, it helps us be a part of our government and know what, what's coming up with us. Um, today, we have Senator Dietrich, Representative Miller, Representative Patton, Representative Gartner, Representative Keither. I will, I will call on you for the questions. I'll just kind of go through my role and then I'll turn it around so not everybody gets stuck being the first answerer of things. So um, looks like we have a couple. I, let's go ahead and get started. Um, while we still have her, um, the first, the one minute question is just to introduce yourself, um, talk about why you serve, if you can, and a little bit about your history. So Senator Dietrich, would you start while we've still got you? Sure, I'd be happy to. Thank you so much. Uh, Brenda Dietrich, I've been in the legislature for five years, four years in the House in the 52nd district, and now I'm serving in the Senate, and it's the 20th Senate district, and this is the end of my first year of four, four years. Um, you know, I've always been in public service in some form or another, superintendent of our school district here, and um, I retired after 40 years, and I was going to just serve on multiple boards, which I do still serve on many community boards, and uh, I was encouraged to consider running for the House of Representatives, which I did, and I was successful in that. And for me, it's um, at that time, it was because we had some very um, uh, unacceptable tax policy, and we were deficit spending, and people were just very angry when you spoke to them at the door. They wanted to see change, and they wanted our state to turn the corner and get back to where we used to be. So for me, the motivation was to bring some, hopefully some common sense and some, some conviction to making Kansas, you know, the best place it can possibly be, especially when, you know, I'm a Kansas native. I was born in Colby, grew up in McPherson, and I moved to Topeka in 2001. So I've lived here for 20 years. And it just seemed to me that even though it was stepping outside my comfort zone, it was something that I, I wanted to try to do to uh, make a positive difference in the lives of our our residents. Um, I'm always focused on issues uh, concerning children, education, and seniors, now that I'm a senior citizen. <laughs> so, you know, and, and plus I have 20 nursing homes in the 20th district. And so it, it just, those are great ways to um, stay involved and do good things for people. So for me, it was just being of service and doing anything and everything I could to be engaged and open and try and do good things. So that's pretty much it for me. Thank you so much, Senator. And, and again, thanks for being here today. I hope sure. we keep you for the hour here. <laughs> and just a reminder, uh, audience folks, let's keep ourselves muted so we don't have a lot of feedback. Uh, and if you have a question, you, uh, put it in the chat room and we'll see how we do with our time as we get toward the end. I can't guarantee we'll get to all of our questions, but we will give it a try. So our next uh, member of the Shawnee County delegation is Representative Miller. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation. Um, I first was elected to the Kansas House in 1979 just as a baby, uh, went on to do a number of other things in the political life and public service and eventually retired from being municipal judge of Topeka at the end of 2015. Not wanting to sit around on my hands, I decided to run for the house. Many of my friends said, I thought you retired, why are you going back to work? And my stock response is, this ain't work. Uh, I enjoy it. It's a good way to keep busy, and I very much love the people that I represent in the 58th district. I mean that sincerely. Uh, they uh, are the folks that uh, require a strong voice in the legislature, and I hope that I serve that purpose. When I ran in 2016, I had a list of things that I wished to accomplish, and we've gotten through most of that list. The one big item still remaining is to eliminate the sales tax on food. So 
I enter this session very excited about the prospect that that may actually happen. The other thing I listed on my little campaign card was at that time, there were 28 Democrats in the Kansas House and whatever is left, 87 Republicans, which to me is far too lopsided to uh, represent both uh, the pros and the cons of issues. And I thought it was important to uh, work towards evening that out and uh, look, look to do that. Uh, we have evened that out from, uh, from the first time I was elected. I served uh, my first term along with uh, Senator Dietrich in the House and uh, was very happy we were able to undo some very bad tax policy and hope that we do not, uh, because we now have healthy balances, we do not revert to uh, some of the uh, poor policy. I'll stop there. I've probably eaten up more than my 60 seconds, but if Jim Gardner wants to forfeit his time, I can fill another 60. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Representative. Appreciate it. Uh, uh, we'll let Representative Gardner think about that. In the meantime, Representative Patton. Well, good, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Fred Patton, I represent the 50th district, which is it's pretty much everything north of the river in Shawnee County. And then I've got a sliver along the western edge, too. So I've got Silver Lake, uh, Dover. I go all the way down to Dover, Willard. I don't have Rossville, but I can see Rossville. So um, that's kind of my district. I, I first got involved in politics when I ran for the school board back in 2003. Um, I did that. Our, we, had, we have three kids. Um, two of them were born. One we hadn't even had yet. And uh, they were little, and I just knew I wanted to play a part um, in their education, and so uh, ran for school board. Did that for 18 years until this last June when I went off the school board. So I only wear one hat today. I no longer have the school board hat anymore. Um, and then in 2014, I ran for the legislature. And, and much like, like you heard from the others, it was really kind of frustration of where we were as a state and where we were headed. Um, the person that was representing us at the time, I didn't feel like was doing a good job of representing the interests of those who lived in the 50th district, um, certainly not in, in with, with education and tax policy and the things that I thought was important. So I decided instead of complaining, um, I should run and, and I, I barely won. I, I can't remember the numbers, but it was less than 50. Um, it was close. It took a, a week to find out if I really uh, won or not. And uh, it's been quite the experience the last seven years. Um, some good days, some not so good days, but we, we've got a good group here in Shawnee County that work well together. We don't always agree on all the issues, obviously, um, but I think when, when it's important, we come together and do what's right for Shawnee County. And I know I'm way over time, but my wife's an elementary school librarian. We've got three kids, uh, two are at KU and one's still a freshman in high school. Going to dance in the Nutcracker this weekend, get your tickets. Um, anyway, that's us. And, and really, the reason I serve is because I hope my kids and their friends want to live in Topeka and Shawnee County and Kansas and you know whatever we can do to make Kansas a great place. So thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Um, Representative Gartner. Uh, thanks, Carol. I, I will not give my 60 seconds to Representative Miller, but uh, <laughs> let me uh, start. Uh, I, uh, I was a, uh, I retired from Southwestern Bell uh, AT&T in 2001, and I was a consultant uh, lobbyist at the Capitol. And so I, I learned the process and uh, I think it was 2016 that uh, my predecessor, Representative Andy Teets, uh, asked me if I was interested and I said, no, no way. And uh, two months later, she called me again, asked, and I said, let me think about it. And after uh, looking around and listening to what was going on at the, at the Capitol, I just decided, yes, I wanted to continue. I wanted to run uh, for the 53rd district because I wanted to continue what Representative Teets had started and represented the district so well. Uh, I, I, have, uh, I did venture into uh, local politics. I was on the Auburn Washburn School Board for nine and a half years and uh, got to know Senator Dietrich uh, and thank God uh, Jackie Lightcap ran for my seat and won and she just won re-election. So uh, kudos to her, she does a great job. Uh, 
really, I just want to continue uh, to represent the 53rd with common sense. Uh, it seems to me that uh, uh, that's the best way to go about it. And uh, as you've already heard, we uh, have overturned some really bad policies that were made previously, and I think we're on the right track. And uh, I'll just leave it at that, Carol. Thank you very much, sir. Um, Representative Keither. Well, good morning, uh, afternoon, I guess. Thank you for having us. Um, I'm Annie Keither and I represent the Central Topeka area, 55th district, uh, Washburn University. Um, I, I, I seem like an old lady compared to a lot of these people coming in in terms of uh, service. Uh, I ran for the first time in 1994 and lost. And then my family had to uh, suffer through two years of me bitching and moaning about the person's voting record uh, who defeated me. So uh, my then 18-year-old uh, who could vote for the first time said, if you don't run again, you're going to drive us all crazy. So I ran again. Uh, so um, I my political uh, stripe started when I was an assistant to Kathleen Sebelius the last four years she was in the House before she became insurance commissioner and governor. Uh, so that really sparked my interest. Um, uh, I have been the ranking member on energy and utilities for uh, since 2004. So that really is my driven uh, uh, care about policy. And one of the issues I'm proudest of really getting through and promoting is broadband, which uh, ser serves the needs in so many different ways for all of us all over the state. So like everybody else, I'm concerned about doing the best we possibly can for the people we represent and um, feel fortunate to do so. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Representative Keither. And about the moment you said that, my computer said your network bandwidth is low. So I guess that tells us something about internet. I hope it may, I hope it hangs on for a little while here. Okay, um, our second question for you and we will not, uh, be so time constrictive on this is for each of you to tell us uh, what you predict to be the top issues of the session that's sneaking right up on us now. So, and uh, now this isn't fair, but I'm I'm turning around here and asking Representative Keither to go first on this question. Well, I'll be first of, of, of the same answer for a lot of us because we know food sales tax elimination is going to be at the top of the list. Um, and I certainly uh, hope we can get that through uh, to total elimination. Um, uh, other than that, uh, uh, broadband issues in terms of uh, health care and whatnot are still a, a grave concern. But um, uh, we're going to be dealing with vaccination issues and COVID issues still and yet, so I'm sure those are going to be at the top of the list, but I think a lot of tax issues are going to be uh, uh, in Representative Gartner's lap this year, so um, I, I'll just keep it at that. Okay, thank you. Um, Representative Gartner. Uh, thank you, Carol. Uh, Rep Representative Keither is right on. I, you know, I'm uh, ranking uh, on House Tax Committee. Have been. Uh, I guess this will be my third year. Um, but uh, sales tax, the state sales tax on food, will be a big issue, and uh, hopefully, we can get that accomplished. There's been many, many. Uh, bills in my five years that have been introduced, one by myself at one time to eliminate it over a period of time. I was talking to a colleague last night and he's already in preparing to introduce a bill on a phase out over three years. Uh, I think we have the uh, revenue uh, this year, next year, Let's go ahead and totally eliminate it in the state of Kansas this next year. Hopefully we can get that done, but there's going to be a lot of property tax issues. Uh, I mean, just there, we've had a special tax committee for two days uh, talking about different recommendations. So just uh, there's going to be a lot of tax issues. 
other than that, I agree with Representative Keither. I think we'll spend a lot of time on vaccination mandates. You know, that's what we spent the special session one day dealing with. Uh, there's more bills to come uh, during uh, 2022. Uh, so uh, we're going to have our work cut out for us. And of course, one of the biggest issues which Representative Miller we'll talk about is redistricting. Uh, that's a key issue coming up. So it's going to be a very, very busy session with a, a number of subjects that we'll, that we'll be discussing. Thank you, sir. To Representative Patton. Very good. Well, um, they did a good job of of giving a highlight of what I think are gonna be some of the big issues. Um, others, as, as Representative Gartner said, redistricting, that process has just begun. Um, responses to COVID, we've had some education interim committees, which I'm sure Senator Dietrich can, I don't think she, I don't know if you serve on those or not, um, but yeah, there's been a number of issues thrown out that I'm sure will at some point in time make it to the floor. It is, it, it's two things are happening at the same time. One, we have more money in the bank than we have had in decades, which you would think is a good pro a good thing, but it's going to lead to some issues with with some crazy tax bills, some spending on things that maybe we shouldn't spend on. I've not been fortunate to be there when we've had money before, so this will be a new experience um, for me. And at the same time, it's an election year, and and the time the the you know every other year is an election year for those of us in the house and. And you never know what to expect in election year. Um, there will be some crazy things introduced and, and hopefully they won't make it to the floor from, from both sides of the political spectrum um, because people want us to take votes on things so they can stick them on postcards and use it against us. So that's, that always comes up in an election year. Um, but hopefully we, you know, we stay focused on, on good policy and, and we do talk about sales tax. Um, we, I, I chair the House Judiciary Committee and serve on, on uh, corrections as well. And, We've got a lot of, of criminal justice reform efforts that have been underway for the last few years. And, and because of election issues, sometimes we don't take up those bills because we may appear to be soft on crime, but there are some needed reforms that, that we need to look at to uh, improve our criminal justice system. So hopefully we can deal with those this year too. Um, again, lots of issues and it's, it's gonna be a busy session. Thank you so much. Representative Miller. Thank you. Um, trying to avoid uh, repetition here, I will mention uh, both Representative Patton and myself have enjoyed our service this summer and fall on the uh, redistricting committee. Uh, I don't know if the league has any interest in that subject, given that we've only heard their testimony a total of 18 times. Uh, I will say I was very disappointed. I didn't get to hear uh, my friend Mary Galligan, who made the presentation uh, at our remote or virtual hearing a week or two ago. I was called out of the room because I was on the conference committee uh, that day for the uh, mandate bill. So I missed Mary's presentation and I hope to catch up with her on what she presented. Uh, but that will, uh, that will be an interesting subject. I have in front of me, in fact, uh, maps of Shawnee County and I'm working to try to develop a proposal that uh, both uh, Representative Patton's party and myself can sign off on. I'm gonna limit my thinking to Shawnee County uh, in terms of new districts. Shawnee County, uh, here in the county, I think we're very fortunate. We did not have major uh, population shifts uh, that it ought to require reinventing the wheel. And so what I'm hoping to do is draw a map that has as little, uh, uh, change from what our current districts are and hope that everyone's content with where we're at and we can avoid uh, the acrimony that redistricting often leads to. And I'm talking only about the House districts. I haven't even looked at the, the Senate side, nor do I uh, plan to much. That's in Senator Dietrich's uh, hands. And uh, I just hope we can get through redistricting, at least here in our county, with a minimum amount of, uh, as I said, acrimony. And I think we, what we have in front of us uh, leaves it open for us to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Dietrich. 
Thank you. I think uh, my colleagues have covered a lot of the territory that um, I would agree with 100%. I think we're going to see a lot of tax policy pieces popping up because sometimes, and I'll speak as a school superintendent, when we didn't have money, it was much easier to manage than when we did, because when you have a surplus, everybody wants a piece of it. And as Representative Patton said, they're going to find ways to spend those dollars when maybe it's better to try and retain some in a surplus or a reserve account. So I think we're going to have like the Taxpayer Bill of Rights is probably going to be resurrected. I think we've read a little bit about that in the paper. Got folks calling me about the Homestead Act. Um, about um, the, the uh, social security, the way we tax social security in the state of Kansas, the $75,000 um, ceiling, they'd like to have that raised. And again, these are a lot of senior issues. Um, education, I think is going to be a, a very hot topic. And as folks have mentioned, it's an election year, not just for the house, but for our state level, um, statewide, um, like attorney general, governor. I mean, you've just got, you know, now we've got a primary with the secretary of state. And so when I saw that, I kind of thought, and when I read who's challenging the secretary of state, I, I kind of feel like we're going to have, and you're not going to like this, I think we're going to have election laws coming back because the person who's primarying the current secretary of state, that's his main focus. So whether those pass or not, I think we're going to see a lot of those bills probably popping up. Uh, just as, uh, you know, as a as a matter of protection, um, I think in the education area, you know, some of the same issues that we dealt with last year will come back. Um, the school finance formula, how it's um, configured, how this, the the um, scholarship, the tax um, credit scholarship program, we expanded it last year as part of a negotiations piece, but I imagine it's going to come back again. And the thing that I always want people to remember, um, and when there's only 40 of us in the Senate, you know, we represent 70 some thousand people. I have a little piece of Wabunsee County and a third of Shawnee County. The, the thing that I, that kind of um, gives me, you know, cause for concern is who is the voice of rural Kansas? Because right now, when you expand the tax credit scholarship program, or you try and work with student um, school vouchers, where a student could take those dollars and move to a private or parochial school, which I'm not in favor of at all, but <clears throat> there are only 41 counties out of 105 in Kansas where a student could do that, or a family could do that. So that leaves 64 counties that have no opportunity, even though it's supposed to be opportunity. It, there is no opportunity there. So I just I just want folks to think long and hard about, are we making good decisions for everybody? Is it good public policy? Or is it public policy that's focused on um, a special interest group? So for me, you know, I, I spend a lot of time pushing back against special interest groups. Uh, sometimes I'm successful, sometimes I'm not. But I'm going to do my best to protect uh, our school finance formula as it currently stands. And just as a reminder, it's only funded through 2023. That's not that far away. So we've only got a couple of years and we could be you know, back in court because the Supreme Court still has jurisdiction over that case. So I am concerned about that. I'm concerned about um, the, all of the um, dialogue that you're seeing about critical race theory and transgender students. That's going to come back again because there are people that just wanna really push that for um, you know, their, perhaps it's their own personal beliefs, but mostly it's political. So, so I guess I would just say um, redistricting is probably the most important thing along with tax policy. I'd love to see us eliminate sales tax on food, but I think there are going to be other issues that are going to pop up that uh, will cause us to um, have some uh, Consternation, is that a good word? Consternation during our session, next session, which starts January 10th. Can't wait. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, our third question we've started talking about a little bit. Uh, yeah, the League of Women Voters from the National uh, League to us here in Topeka, Shawnee County are concerned about the area of redistricting. So our third prepared question is, uh, 
asking what ideas you might have for new districts that could improve the Shawnee County delegation's abilities to successfully address constituent needs through legislative action. And since his picture came up, he might can still you, have Can you some... repeat that? That was a long question. It is How a can the Shawnee long County question. delegation? Yeah. And I'm reading it. So what ideas do you have for new districts that could improve Shawnee, the Shawnee County delegation's ability to address constituent needs through legislative action? Got it? Or just thoughts on redistricting for that matter. And I, this time start with Representative Miller because he was already thinking about it. Well, as I don't know how many of you uh, follow the emails we get from your organization, but it was many months ago now that we first heard from the league about some of their concerns, one of which was they wanted us to establish some ground rules. I think we started out uh, saying by September 1, and that day came and passed, and then they moved it to, I don't know, November 1. The problem Problem is we have yet to establish any ground rules. Uh, not only have we not established any, there's been no efforts on the part of the leadership of that committee uh, to even discuss what ground rules. As I understand historically, those rules are set by what we call the LCC, the Legislative Coordinating Council. Uh, there have been some attempts uh, by the minority party to bring that to discussion and those have been uh, aborted uh, by the leadership of the LCC. Here it is almost the beginning of the session and we've yet to even have a discussion about the ground rules. And until we establish some ground rules, who knows? Well, what I'm afraid of is there's already some preconceived ideas on what the maps are gonna look like that any ground rules we set will be, by the time we actually discuss it, will be irrelevant. I hope that's not the case, but in the 18 different uh, sessions that we had on our listening tours, uh, there was no opportunity for any members of the committee to speak. There was no opportunity for any members of the committee uh, to ask questions. It was strictly to listen to the public, which is fine, except we've not had a single meeting where we actually discussed the direction we wanted to go uh, as members of the committee, and that's disappointing. And um, it, right now, if, if things continue the way they are, we're on a glide path to the courts and uh, I'm not sure anybody uh, looks forward to that. That ends up being a, uh, you guess, you guess what the districts are gonna look like and maybe that's not all bad, I don't know. But I, don't, I don't think that's healthy. I think we need to work together to get first some ground rules and, and secondly, some maps drawn so people can actually respond to what that proposal looks like. Enough said, I, I think it'd be fair, I don't wanna mess with your order, but at this moment to kick it over to Representative Patton, who, as I said, serves with me on that committee. You read my mind, Representative Patton. Yes, well, I would echo some of those same concerns. I've never been in the legislature during a redistricting process. And so going into this, you know, not knowing what to expect. And I think it would be helpful if fairly quickly, um, again, I would agree that we should have done this already, have a committee meeting. I mean, we've had this listening tour where we've heard from the public, but we've not had a chance really as a committee to meet and talk through what this is going to look like. We all have full schedules in the Capitol. We serve on committees all day long. We're on the floor meeting with constituents. I'm not even sure where a redistricting committee time slot fits in. And so lots of those things, I think it would be helpful that we knew what it was going to look like, what the timeline was going to be, um, so all of us, not just us in the legislature, but those who are interested in the process also know what that timeline is going to look like. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I echo a lot of what Representative Miller said, and I, I'm glad people like him are, are beginning to work on, on maps because maybe there are groups out there that have already put maps together and there is some secret plan, but I don't know about it either. And so it does concern me that we're at this point in the process and and I feel like we're just really beginning and, and we're on the clock because um, we don't want the courts to decide for us again. Um, and so we need to get that done. But to kind of loop back to your question, I don't know that, that we need to make significant changes as Representative Miller said in Shawnee County to better influence you know, um, the legislature when it comes to issues in Shawnee County. I think we have a good group. We seem to lay out fairly good demographically. Um, 
We have, I, I don't feel like we're a gerrymandered county by any means. We have, have the right people in the right places. Um, I do think it's important that not only do we focus on Shawnee County, but we look at those similar counties. There's the, the, the chambers of, um, what is it, Emporia, Manhattan, Lawrence and Topeka um, have been working together. And I think it's important that if we're gonna have a, a larger vo voice in Shawnee County, we need to make sure those communities have a larger voice too, because we have lots of similar similarities. We all have hospitals, universities, um, lots of government employees. And so um, as Johnson County or Sedgwick County, those other counties get bigger, they get more and more representatives, our voice becomes a little bit smaller. Um, and so it's important that we tag together with other communities like ours. And so I hope as we look at this, we try to protect those counties as well and make sure that uh, we have a strong collective voice in the Capitol. Thank you. Uh, Senator Dietrich. Thank you. You know, um, I, I don't know that I can add, add much more to this. You know, I've not gone through redistricting myself either because I've only been in the legislature now for five years. I certainly am paying attention to uh, the listening tours. I went to the one in Lawrence, which was the closest one to me, and um, listened to the conversation. And I understand in some communities, they've been split in multiple districts. And I think that is problematic because they don't feel like they've got one unified voice in the legislature. I think in Shawnee County, though, I think we've done a pretty good job over the years of working well together. And um, just this next Friday, we've got the Shawnee County delegation and we'll be taking testimony from anybody who wants to come and, and talk to us. So, and when I look at the district that I'm in, in the Senate, um, the 52nd hasn't changed much. That was the district in the house. So the Senate district, I mean, it does pick up a, uh, like four precincts in Wabunsee County. And when I talk to the Wabunsee County folks, they've got three senators in a county of 7,200 people. And so for them, sometimes they feel like that's not, um, you know, a, a great representation for them. Uh, so I think Shawnee County right now looks pretty good. You know, I think the, the way the, the districts have been configured, there may be a little bit of a population shift. I think I lost 100 residents in the census in the Senate, in the 20th Senate district. That those 100, you know, residents do not really, or constituents do not really make that much of a difference. So I'm pretty content with my district. So I'll be looking at, I'm, I'm very interested in what uh, Representative Miller was talking about and looking at the house districts. I think the 52nd is uh, where I did serve as, as well positioned, but it's, I just, I'm concerned that there are many, many people out there drawing their own maps for their own benefit. And so it's just going to be interesting to see if we ever do get to see what those maps look like. I, I'm, I'm with Representative Patton. When are you ever going to be able to meet? You know, we've got a very full calendar when we report in January, every day's full. Maybe on some of those pro forma days, you're not pro forma, <laughs> maybe, I don't know. It's gonna be interesting. But I'm hoping that uh, that folks feel that the Shawnee County delegation is listening to them and that they can get in touch with us. And that, you know, cause that was one of the reasons that I ran because the representative, the person who was representing my district in, in the house never returned a phone call or an email. And I just think we have a responsibility as elected officials to be present and available and to communicate. So I'm hoping that even through the League of Women Voters that you feel that you are being heard. Yes, and we appreciate the proud and the few who are here with us today. I, I might also mention that uh, under the leadership of Mary Galligan, who a lot of you know, uh, we've had a very active uh, Fair Maps committee that's been working and we will be there Friday at your meeting too talk a little bit more about what we've come up with. So, um, Representative Gartner. Uh, yes, I, you know, my district, the 53rd district, I've already been uh, working with Representative Miller on looking at, I think I was 324, 26 uh, voters shy or on the census. So, uh, I, I don't really see a big problem in Shawnee County because most of the districts have not lost that many. And 
Uh, I think Representative Miller is doing a great job of trying to uh, even those districts back out, and he will. And uh, I, I really have a lot of faith in Representative Patton and Representative Miller uh, representing Shawnee County on the redistricting committee. I am concerned, as we've all pointed out already, that the committee hasn't met. There are no rules, no guidelines. That's uh, that's just that's a terrible situation to put uh, this important item in at this point in time. So I'm real concerned that we'll come up with great maps and uh, it'll be thrown to the court and the court's going to end up drawing the districts. Thank you. And Representative Keither. Thanks. Um, well, I served on the redistricting committee 10 years ago. Uh, so I have an acquaintance with what the process is like, and it's rather terrifying. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I also appreciate uh, the work that uh, uh, both uh, Representative Patton and Miller are doing, and I certainly feel comfortable um, uh, with them working for the entire delegation. Um, I will say, uh, when I served 10 years ago, uh, I was appointed to a special committee that drew maps for Northeast Kansas. It wasn't just Shawnee County. And so uh, with what is going to be shifting in Wyandotte County and Sh Johnson County, we'll have a direct impact on what happens in Shawnee County. So uh, I think we need to be aware of that. And um, uh, it's most unfortunate that there haven't been any meetings to understand what the ground rules are. Uh, to answer uh, Senator Diedrich, I mean, the number of maps that were drawn by individuals and were presented on the floor 10 years ago was mind boggling. I mean, and it was for self-protection uh, by and large. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that's gonna be driven and controlled by the speaker. Um, I don't think he's necessarily interested in letting a lot of that happen. Um, I too wonder if uh, there are maps already drawn uh, and I find that concerning, uh, but uh, there's a long way to go. The meetings for the, uh, the people on the redistricting me uh, committee, uh, we met uh, in, at lunch hours in the Supreme Court room to an overflowing room uh, several, many times, but uh, it's hard to really understand where you can go from here when you don't know what the rules are. And that's very uh, uh, sad that we don't have that in place at this part of the process. So I wish you guys luck. Uh, thanks for, for uh, uh, looking out for us and, and we'll see what happens. Thank you. Um, our final planned question was, um, the League of Women Voters has been very interested in expanding opportunities for um, voting in Shawnee County. Um, what are your uh, thoughts about expanding participation in voting in Kansas. Well, when we get 20% of registered voting voters voting, we think that's great. You know, there's really something wrong. Uh, what do you think about that in light of uh, the legislation we've had the last couple of years and what might be coming up? And who should we? Representative Gartner, you have some thoughts? <laughs> Well, uh, Carol, uh, I, it's to me, it's pretty simple. You uh, you allow everyone uh, to vote the easiest way possible for for them. So if it's uh, mail-in uh, ballots, if it's uh, I, I don't you know drive-through, uh, we've seen over the past uh, year with legislation that we're going the opposite direction to, in my opinion, to try to suppress the vote. And we should be going doing the opposite and expanding it every way possible to drive up those numbers mm -hmm. to make it easier for people to vote. I mean, that's our democracy and that's what we should be striving for. So I'm, I get very, uh, um, 
frustrated uh, with this whole voting situation and uh, tried to restrict and suppress the vote. Um, so that's where I'm at. I'm going to vote. Uh, I'm going to support anything that will make it easier for folks to vote. Uh, you know, uh, give them the day off. I mean, we there are myriad of things we could be doing. So that's where I want to see uh, things to go. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Senator Dietrich. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm old enough to remember, and maybe some of you do as well, the old program Kids Voting Kansas. Do you remember that? Yep. Where kids would accompany their parents to the polls and they showed them how they voted, they participated, they got a sticker. I think things like that are very important. And we've, we've lost that. I think our kids are just not, um, they're just not where they need to be. I don't think they think that um, their vote matters. And, 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 and as Representative Patton mentioned, you know, when he had his first election, there was a, you know, it was a close vote, right? So all those votes counted. And so I think that's what we need to, to make sure that, that folks realize that um, elections have consequences and kids need to be inspired to get to the polls and start voting. And how do we do that? Is it through education in our K-12 system? Is it doing something like Kids Voting Kansas? You know, what can we do to get those kids excited about being a part of our process, our democratic process? So I think that's important. Um, I'm, I serve on Fed and State in the, in the Senate, which I did not serve on that in the House. And so all those election bills came through our committee. It's very interesting, the different perspectives that folks have on those, on those bills. So um, it'll, be, it'll be fascinating to see if we are going to see more uh, stringent um, voting and election laws coming through our committees in the House and the Senate now. Um, and it's certainly something to pay attention to. So um, I think our Shawnee County Election Office does a great job. I've never had any issues with them. I think they're um, a trusted source. And um, I don't think that we've got issues with election credibility across Kansas at all. So, and we've been audited and people know that. So um, I guess, <laughs> I guess this is gonna be a stay tuned. Um, <laughs> but I sure wish we had a way to get our kids more excited about voting. I do have to brag about us a little bit. League of Women Voter Volunteers uh, went to all the high schools in uh, Topeka and uh, read, helped some new voters register themselves. And uh, we saw pictures of Seaman High School students getting on the bus to go make their first vote early at the election office, which warmed our hearts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Representative Keither. You're still mute. I did, okay, there we go. Um, I, I'm seeing that Melissa Masoner was uh, very glad for the shout out for Kids Voting Kansas because I certainly remember that program as well. Um, uh, I think, you know, there isn't a whole lot to say here that hasn't been said. Um, we're all frustrated by the, the low turnout at the time of, of elections. And um, uh, I think if we all really had the answers to this issue, we wouldn't be having the problem. So, um, those of us that want to make it more accessible and, um, you know, I mail in ballots to everybody would be fine with me. Uh, but um, we're, as Representative Gartner said, we're going the opposite direction in Kansas right now. And frankly, with two third majority in both chambers, those of us that want to see different action um, are going to really have a hard time. So, um, I'm not here to say it's good news. I'm sorry. We were afraid of that. Um, Representative Miller. Thank you. I uh, have the pleasure of being the ranking member on the House Elections Committee. And our principal task as, as Democrats is to try to keep as many bills as possible in committee because nothing that's being proposed is helpful on this issue. Uh, it's interesting, I, I did a, one of my, constituent surveys three years ago, one of the questions I included was, should it be harder or easier for people to vote? And the response I got was the most overwhelming majority of all the questions on the questionnaire 
over 90% said it should be easier. Uh, and yet the uh, forces in the legislature and being, being quite partisan, it's, it's a Republican supermajority that's promoting these ideas of restricting voting, even after the Republican Kansas Secretary of State appeared in front of our elections committee uh, a year ago and uh, off the heels of that election said that he would recommend no changes to the laws, that things were working very well in Kansas and that we ought to leave things alone. Nonetheless, we spent the whole session listening to proposals uh, to make it harder. Uh, we finally did see a bill on the floor. Nothing came out, nothing substantial came out of the House Elections Committee, and I was fine with that because I thought they were all bad proposals. But the way they got passed is they floated them uh, through the Senate and directly onto the floor of the House. So we didn't even have committee discussions about the bills that ultimately passed on a very straight partisan vote. Uh, that the governor wisely vetoed only to be overridden by the supermajority. Uh, I was very disappointed in some of my Republican colleagues that felt compelled to pass those laws that we did last year. And hopefully we don't make matters even worse this year because as you've noted, the problem is people not voting. It's not people voting fraudulently. There's no evidence whatsoever of fraudulent votes. Uh, the one issue that I brought to the district attorney was a number of people who are voting from uh, not mailboxes, but little boxes at the UPS stores, and he's failed to do anything about prosecuting uh, those people who actually appear to be uh, committing fraud. So if we have fraud, let's do something about it. I think it's virtually non-existent, and these bills that are being passed are simply to make it more difficult for people to vote instead of what we ought to be doing and making it easier. Thank you. Thank you. Representative Patton. I'm last. Uh, this is, and I'll agree with everyone, this is a frustrating issue for me. I mean, the, as Brenda said, elections have consequences and, and I don't, people don't realize that. It's a, it's a culture thing nowadays, I think, that, that people just don't vote. Um, I, yes, I think the policies we adopt in the legislature can have an impact one way or the other on turnout, but that's not, I don't think that's the big issue. It's, it's people are not taking the time. They don't understand, maybe they do understand the importance but for whatever reason, they don't vote. Um, I, I think we're all gonna give a shout out to Melissa. Melissa works so hard at this and, and trying, and, and you all, but Melissa's the one that I hear from all the time, um, at trying to get young people to understand the importance of this, because it's going to take time to turn this around. I and mean, we hear the, the low percentages of, of voter turnout, and that's, that's percentage of registered voters that vote, not all voters that are eligible voters that don't vote, um, you look at, I mean, in, in my school district, for example, this fall, and, and not that maybe the elections wouldn't have turned out differently, but it clearly low voter turnout, I think, in some of our, our smaller races easily determines who wins and loses. And, and, and we know that. I mean, we all, and this maybe ties back to redistricting a little bit, but in, in my area, for example, odds are Republican is going to win the 50th House District. And in Annie's district, the Democrat's gonna win that district. That's just the demographics. But what happens because of that is, is it decides, we decide our elections in, in August in the primary and nobody hardly votes in the primary. So it's all about turnout. And, and I, don't, I don't know how to fix it. As I think it was Annie that said, if we knew that what the solution was, I think we'd we'd all try to fix it, but we've got to start encouraging more and more people to, to understand what that, the importance of voting is and to get out and vote. And I don't know how to do it. I, in that election that I won in 2014 by just a handful of votes, you wouldn't believe how many people I ran into that week saying, oh, Fred, I thought you had this. I, I, didn't, I drove by the election place, but I didn't stop to vote. I'm like, if I lose this by one vote, I'm gonna find you. But, and those were friends and family. So. I don't know what the answer is for sure, but I appreciate everyone that's working on it. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm going to choose one of the first questions that came up in the chat, and then um, we're gonna be running out of time, I think. Um, uh, tomorrow or by tomorrow, I will have the recording of this and I will have all of the questions. We have some great questions. so. If, if members of the delegation, if you don't mind, I will send you the other questions so you get an idea of what people on, in our group are asking about that we haven't had today and or maybe a link to the recording too. So this question um, 
is I'm concerned, and I chose this because a whole lot of you have had some school board experience, it sounds like so. Uh, I'm concerned for our public schools. I worry that the DEI concerns that parents have need to be addressed so public schools don't suffer an exodus of funds or students. Do you have some thoughts on that question about the public schools? Uh, Senator Dietrich. Sure, I think um, this is all tied into a national platform that has just kind of filtered into the state and now kind of gotten legs here. You know, the, the, uh, the diversity, equity and inclusion offices that you have in some of our larger urban school districts is the DEI issue. And, and they're trying to link that to critical race theory, which is just non-existent in our K-12 public schools. So they, they're trying to find a way to show that we are touching on critical race theory in our schools because we have, you know, diversity, um, you know, equity and inclusion officers or offices. And so I, it's just such a weak link. I, you know, it's going to be, we're going to have to talk about it. It's going to come through education committees in both chambers. Um, you know, I did not to um, digress too much, but I was wondering if any bills have been pre-filed yet. So you can get on the legislature's website and look for pre-filed bills in the House and the Senate. None are, are listed in the Senate. And I only see three or four pre-filed bills in the House and none of them are dealing with education really, uh, not CRT or DEI. So I thought that was interesting. So if they're out there, they just haven't been filed yet. Um, we're gonna have to talk about it. It's going to get, you know, pretty um, you know, adversarial because there will be people that you know, absolutely believe things are happening in our schools that are not. And it's like, it just goes back to every other um, painful debate we've had in both chambers. There are people that solidly believe something and there's a group that believe those people are wrong and there's no meeting in the middle. So I don't know where this is going to end up, but it will be debated, it will be discussed. And I think the community needs to be actively involved with their legislator to express their thoughts. Because really the people we hear about are the squeakiest wheels. And sometimes those squeaky wheels have really bad information. So we just need to make sure everybody reaches out to let us know what they're thinking, what they're feeling and, um, and if you think that these issues are concerning, then let us know. Let everybody know. Don't say, oh, that representative or that senator never gets back to me. So, you know, they're not listening. Keep, just keep pushing at it. Keep pushing. And, and I, you know, I think you're going to be hearing quite a bit about that. Good advice. Thank you. Representative Miller. Carol, he just sent a, a note in the chat that he had to leave. Oh, well, nothing from him. Representative Patton. Well, so being a school board member for 18 years, um, I certainly appreciate the work school board members do. They, they don't run because of the pay. There is no pay. Um, they don't run for, most of them don't run for political purposes. They run because they want to do good things and have um, our schools have good educational programs. And so, I trust the work they do. I think our state board of education does a good job. Do I agree with everything? No, um, but but I overall I think they do a good job. Um, it's, in fact, when we get done this afternoon at two o'clock, I've got a meeting with Commissioner Watson to talk about issues at the state board of education level. Um, I think those discussions need to keep happening. As Senator uh, Dietrich said, I, I think you all need to be engaged on these issues. This is one where there there are a small group of people on both ends of the spectrum again speaking up loudly. And I, and I think it's important that we get a lot of people engaged and be heard. Um, don't, Brenda said this as well. Don't quit contacting people you don't hear from. Um, I just, maybe they're not reading their emails. Maybe they're not listening to their voicemails, but it can't hurt to keep writing and keep trying to call. And, and that's on any issue. Um, be persistent, make sure you're heard. And, and other people uh, that you know that feel the same way, have them reach out as well. We, we get lots of emails and plenty of phone calls. Um, but I can assure you, those of us that are on this call, while we may not get you all replied back, I know Senator Diedrich replies to everyone with a handwritten note. We don't all get everyone replied to, um, but but we're hearing, hearing you. And so please, please do reach out and 
yes, the education is an important area, but all the issues are important. So speak up. Okay. Representative Gartner. Uh, this is, uh, I've been another frustrating uh, area of uh, serving in the legislature uh, with CRT, DEI. Uh, it seems to me over the last couple of years, we've, we've dealt with a lot of uh, solutions, looking for problems. Uh, a number of the issues we deal with on the House floor it's really, there's not a problem. Uh, this is one that, that I believe, uh, you know, we, we serve with a lot of folks that, that uh, for years have been saying it's, uh, they believe in local control. Uh, but when it comes to these issues, all of a sudden, they, they don't believe in local control. I'm, I'm a firm believer after with Fred and, and serving with Brenda for nine and a half years, uh, uh, school boards know what they're doing. They listen to their constituents. They do the right thing. So let's let the local school boards deal with the issues. Uh, curriculum is, isn't just, you know, just plucked out of the air and thrown into a school district, it goes through the process, a process, and the board's involved. So let's, let's let the local school boards take these issues. The state ought to uh, just back off. And uh, because CRT is not, as Brenda's already pointed out, and Fred, we all know, it's not being taught in any school district in the state. So Let's let the local school boards deal with this issue as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Representative Keither, can you wrap this up for us? Oh, well, that, that's a biggie. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 there are lots of things in the chat about CRT. And um, I think a lot of uh, people uh, in the legislature are, uh, not only talking about something uh, that isn't taught in our schools, but they're expanding it into um, uh, other issues of race and history and whatnot that should be taught. This is not, it, it's history um, and you learn from history. So um, we're gonna have a battle on our hands with this because it's getting expanded into a whole bunch of different issues that has no business going into. So uh, um, it's, it's gonna be very tricky. I've never served on a school board. I went to public schools. All of my children went to public schools. I'm a supporter of public schools and ours are good and have suffered through COVID. So let's get back on our feet and teach what the kids need to learn and, and not expand into areas that do belong in school boards and decisions there. So did I do a good job there? You did a great job. <laughs> Actually, and... Um, our time is perfect. Um, thank you so much for spending this noon hour with us today. Um, I feel like you guys are a great team that do a good job of representing us here in Shawnee County and I appreciate it. I have. I wish we had time for every single really good question that we have in the chat, but I'll send you the link to the recording if you wanna spend more time looking on it later. So. Uh, we will close our meeting now and thank you so much.